All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to our conference call for our Africa tours for 2018 and 2019. Today is July 15th, 2018. All the conference call details were sent via email uh, to everyone that's on our tour list. And if you didn't receive an email or if you're not on our tour list, you can um, email me your information at AFTA2010 at MSN.com or you can text your details at 404-931-9429 and uh, text your first last name and email address and, and naturally we'll have your, um, your phone number. Uh, so what we were doing is to make sure that everyone who is interested in our Africa tours, right now the next tours that we have going is Ghana November 16th to the 26th, 2018 and May 22nd to June 4th, 2019, and other tours after that is Brazil, July 2019, and South Africa, with optional Zambia, Zimbabwe, and uh, Botswana for November of 2019. So all of these details for these tours are on our website at Africa for the Africans.org, and uh, once you get to the main menu of our website, you'll see. Um, a slideshow presentation in the middle of the page, and that's just our previous pictures from um, October 2016 and in the past. Uh, we do have new pictures that we want to add to the slideshow on the website, but all of our photo galleries are on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Bomani, and you just have to go up to the uh, photo option, and once you click on the photo option, it will uh, give you a list of all of the tours that we have done since uh, 2006 to 2018, all 14 of our Ghana Journey of a Lifetime. Excuse me, on the left side of the page there is a MP3 presentation of our uh, audio and also a um, presentation of this uh, PSAs that we have This all linked into the audio. So once you um, change your page, the audio and the pictures um, come out in a random mode. And uh, if you if your audio and the slideshow is now playing, that means you need to update your flash play on your computer because uh, both of those are flash based. Now going down to the uh, main part of the uh, website, over to the very left you'll see the home page and you'll see a list of all of the tours. Ghana tour November 2018, uh, Ghana tour May 2019, Brazil 2019, and also South Africa 2019. And uh, once you click on the link, which I'm going to do to the Ghana tour, November of 2018. All of these are tours that we have on the website. It's 100% details, and the reason why we have all of the details clear is that way anyone that has any interest can process the details uh, up front before they call and ask uh, a lot of unnecessary questions or questions that we want people to just look at the information first, then jot down questions. So once you get to the tour link, you're going to see Ghana tour overview, November 16 to the 26, 2018. Once you open that tour link, it's going to give you the full overview of all of the price for the full package, for the price without the flights, and an additional if you want a room by yourself. The last conference call, we went through all the details on the tour overview, so what I want to do is just, uh, just keep on flowing down, and the focus is to really go over the visa and some more uh, details that we have for the tour preparation. Now, the next link below is... Uh, Ghana tour general terms. That's the general terms of the tour, and it talks about uh, payments. It talks about our responsibility as far as uh, our organization and everyone that we deal with on the tour. And it talks about rules, regulations, and there's clarity so everyone can follow all the tour rules and be on the same page. Uh, the tour itinerary is one of the most laid out thing. It tells you about everything that we're going to do on the tour itself. So the most important thing for everyone to do is to be clear on the actual itinerary and we do need everyone to read the itinerary. Uh, unfortunately, on the last tour that we did, we had several people who had no clue on what we're doing, which, which I, I don't understand because I would never pay for a tour that I don't know what I'm doing and what I'm going on. So I appreciate everybody for trusting me and trusting what we're doing and everything, but that's never the point. The point is everyone needs to be clear on everything for the purpose of uh, being clear that way it's not a situation where you're confused on a tour and then you're your confusion is causing delays and causing us to having to cater to you because you're not clear. 
So it's a simple process we want everyone to do is to read through all of these details and then reach out to us with questions and then we can, once everything is clear, we are open to accepting deposits. Uh, next uh, link is the uh, Ghana visa details, which I'm going to go over right now in full details. And below the Ghana visa details is just all preparation, which we will go over after that. So I sent a, um, a Ghana visa email to everyone on our email list. Anyone who did not receive a Ghana visa email, you can always just uh, send me a text or send me an email so I can send it to you. The v information that you're looking at right now on the website, the Ghana Visa Guidelines, November 2018, or whichever, um, if you're looking at the May tour, now that detail is fine. Uh, but what I did when I sent the email, I sent a few attachments. So let me uh, pull up the email, and we'll go through the exact email that I sent to everyone. And remember, especially if you're traveling with us in November and May, if you did not receive the Ghana Visa email, please request it, and we can resend it. But it's trust me, it's in your inbox uh, somewhere. You can just type in Ghana Visa and search, and it will come up. If not, we can get it to you. All right, and Ghana Visa coming up. I'm sorry, Bomani. I'm a little lost. This is Robin. You're speaking as if there's a presentation on the screen. And no, it's not a presentation on the screen. I'm asking you to follow my conversation based on the, the, Ghana, uh, the Ghana email I was sent and information on our website at africafoodafricans.org. If you're not on the website or you have you're not a, you're not you don't have a computer in front of you, just do your best, and you can also re-listen to the the call and go back through it. All right, so family, um, you can either look at the uh, Ghana visa information that's on our website under any of the uh, tour link, the Ghana November 2018 tour information, or the Ghana May 2019 tour information. And beyond that, I sent the email out to everyone with the Ghana visa details. So if you have that one. That's what I want you to take a look at, that email. And for everyone who has that email, the best thing to do is to print everything out and go through it at least two to three times and make sure you're clear on everything. And jot, jot your questions out so we can go through the visa details with clarity. And if you just have questions after this call, that's fine. Just reach out to me. We can uh, talk about it and go through it. But the process of the email is to make sure you have everything that you need. All right. The, it's, it's a, uh, the email I was sent would say Ghana. Visa requirements, uh, application and process, 2018. And if you're traveling in 2019, it's the same details. Please read as soon as possible. Now, there's four attachments uh, on the email. You have an image of the Ghana visa. Uh, so once you receive your Ghana visa, when you open the book, you look in the book, and you see a Ghana visa stamps. I've gotten like many calls like when people get their passport back, and they say they didn't get their visa. And I tell them, let's open up there passport and look inside of it and you'll see the stamp and it will tell you if you have one to five years if you do a multiple entry and if you do a single entry uh, it's only good for three months. The next uh, attachment is the Ghana visa application. Now this is the blank application itself. Print it out and fill out your details yourself. If you're good at using Adobe Acrobat uh, then you can just type in your details and save it or you can just type it in regular Adobe Reader, and then you can just print it off. But it's all up to you uh, which option you choose. If you do decide to fill out the application, write in it, make sure everything is in capital letters. Now, the next attachment is, retire is uh, requirements to obtain a Ghana visa. And then uh, the final attachment is Bomani sample Ghana visa. Now, everything on my sample application is typed up, so what you have to do is you can edit and modify anything on there based on what you need to put. All of the contact information as far as um, the hotels, which is the Mifflin Hotel, which we're going to stay in Accra, and One Africa in Elmina, those are our contacts. Those are the people that uh, we've known for a long time that invite us into the country, and we're staying at their place. So that's uh, what you have to put on the application, and everything all matches up. Right, let me read through some of the uh, details. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to actually uh, read through the actual the content in the email, which is more so a summary. Uh, so it says, greetings, our Ghana tour groups. Uh, please read as soon as possible. And we really mean read as soon as possible because your visa is the most important thing. Everyone is required to have a visa to travel to Ghana. Start the uh, single entry Ghana visa process two and a half months before departure. Uh, so if you're looking to go to Ghana, you're looking to use a three-month 
$60 single entry visa. Do not apply for that visa before two and a half months because if you do, your visa will be expired before you leave here and get to Ghana and then you have to apply for a more expensive visa, this emergency visa on arrival, which is $150. So if you are going for the multiple entry, so $100, and you can start the multiple entry, I would say, say the earliest 10 months before you travel. So if you're looking to travel with us, in November, you can start doing that now. If you're looking to travel with us in May, I just recommend that you start it at the beginning of the year or the end of the year. So multiple entry is not mandatory for the uh, for any of the tours. It's just uh, you just have to know the difference between it. Um, but we recommend multiple entry because it just gives you a lot of times, and we feel like Ghana is a wonderful country that you may want to go back and back and forth within a year or two. But Everybody's situation is different. So please take your time and just uh, read through all of the uh, information. This is a sample but detailed process that you have to get right. right. So we talk about the attachments. A uh, quick check sheet for your visa package. Uh, you will need two applications signed. Uh, use my sample application as an example. Staple two passport style photos on the top right of your application. An application has to be dated and signed, both of them. So you can literally fill out one application, data and assign it, and make a copy of the next one. And both of them have to go to the embassy. If you want to make a third one for yourself, that's absolutely fine. Money order payable to the embassy of Ghana, 60 for single entry, 100 for multiple entry. And please, nobody, do not send a personal check or, or anything like that. Just get a um, post office money order. That's the safest thing to use. Flight itinerary with your full name as it shows on your passport. Now, in case of the flight itinerary, I'll send everyone that's traveling with us in November that have made a deposit their flight itinerary. And the flight itinerary is just what Delta sent us as far as the schedule details, and we just modify that into a flight itinerary. So that just usually have your first and last name. That's fine because all you're looking to do is put that in the application package for your visa, and then um, it just needs to match up with the, the time sequence of when you're going and coming to the country. They just want to know what your flight sequence looks like. Uh, and whatever your schedule looked like based on what we sent you, that's the closest it's going to look to what we finalize uh, two months before we travel with our Delta slash KLM, our group booking. Uh, beyond this, our flight attorney, you need a bank statement or a letter from your bank to verify your name and address for proof of residency. And that's all that is. Uh, I've sent in three different bank statements for my um, using my IT business. Uh, and I just just print the full account out and just drop it in the package and that uh, does work all three times. If you want to uh, cross out any numbers for any reason, that's absolutely fine. Uh, they just need to make sure that the date, they just need to make sure that your residency information on there and, and then all of the names and address and everything matches up. So it's just a form of reference. Right. Follow the guidelines and mail everything requested to the Ghana Embassy. Uh, use my sample application for hotel address and guide to fill out the application. Our recommendation is to send and return the package by priority mail with tracking. So once you fill out all of the um, package details for your Ghana visa, you're going to put that in, you know, put in like a, in a, in an envelope, and then when you get, once you get to the post office, you're going to do a prepaid return envelope with your return address. That way, when embassy finishes with your passport, they can just put it in the package and send it back to you. So the ideal thing is to get tracking outgoing, which you check to track your package to the embassy, and then you get the return tracking. That way, once the package is active, you can just go back and check it, you know, like several few days later, and then make sure your package is coming back. That way, you can time it to pick it up. So these are some of the basic uh, details that we have on that information. So we want to make sure that it's clear with everyone and. Naturally, when we send emails like this out, if you have any questions or something that's not clear, just click on reply back to the email and this with your question and then we'll just give you a quick reply back. Now I'll talk about the flight itinerary. So what I want to do is go through the uh, flight schedule. And everything I'm talking about for um, November coming up is the same aspect of it for uh, May. It's just that tour is further out. So I did uh, try to do uh, our group booking to get all of our flight sequence together for uh, May, but it's just literally too early. There's not enough flight routings in the Delta KLM systems. So I just have a base reservation now to hold a certain amount of tickets. And uh, once two, three weeks come by, when more routes are in place, I'll start 
getting everybody reservations um, that's traveling in May next year uh, with us to Ghana and get your flight itinerary out so you can start working on your visa. All right, uh, let me pull up uh, one of our flight itineraries. I put the flight schedule in our itinerary. So the first and last day of the itinerary just tells you the flight sequence, our flight numbers, and the times we're going to leave. All right, so we're leaving uh, Friday, November 16th, and our flight leaves uh, from Atlanta at 8.08. .08. And uh, we have a, a situation where we have a meetup uh, two hours before the flight uh, depart, uh, but also uh, for those in the Atlanta area, we just have an earlier meetup when we all meet up together uh, at the airport before we uh, pass through our security. Uh, that way we can work our school supplies and things like that. So those are details we'll talk about later. But um, the flight schedule for some of us, some of us are going to connect to Atlanta and some of us don't have connection flights. Some of us are just going to leave from where they are and go directly to Amsterdam and then we'll, we'll meet them there. In the case of if you're in Chicago or a Houston uh, Intercontinental, you have a direct flight from where you are to Amsterdam. Or if you're from wa in Washington, uh, Dulles. Now the next airport by you uh, usually have a connection flight. Like if you're leaving from DCA, um, you have to connect with us in Atlanta, so you end up having six flights versus four. So those are some of the options that we offer if you live in the popular cities like um, uh, D.C., uh, Washington, Dulles, um, Virginia, which is close by. If you, and it's all up to you, uh, and you, know, you have to look at the, se the sequence. So um, those are some of the things that we've talked to some of the people who have that, those options, just to uh, be clear on flight schedule options. And some people literally don't have much options, so we just uh, book you the best flight. Now, once we uh, get to Amsterdam, we get to Amsterdam 10.45 in the morning on November uh, 17th. And the goal is for us all to meet up two hours before the flight. Uh, the flight leaves at 2.25 p.m. The repeats Accra and gets there at 7.55. Uh, once we get to Accra, we'll have our tour bus our company um, meet, us at the, meet us inside of baggage claim. And then we'll all organize ourselves and proceed down to the bus and head to the uh, Micklin Hotel. Right? And for so everyone who's traveling with us, make sure you click on the um, go to the Micklin Hotel website so you can be clear on the type of hotel that they have and everything. All right, on our return, it's a little bit different. Uh, usually we don't have flights from, to go to France, but uh, we're leaving November 26th, and our flight leaves Accra, Ghana at 10.35 directly to uh, Paris, France. And then we get to Paris at 6.10, and then we leave at 9.10 in the morning on November the 27th. And then we uh, get back to Atlanta at 1.03. Now, your flight sequence may be different from that, but everyone has the same flight sequence from Amsterdam to Accra and from Accra to Paris or from Accra to Amsterdam. So that's not a big deal with the flight sequence. Uh, there's no way we can always get everyone on the same flights and things like that. So be clear and be clear with the uh, flight schedule so you're clear on everything. And two months before we get ready to leave, we'll have everything finalized in the Delta system to where we're paying the balance and you'll have full access to log on to delta.com, use your finalized confirmation number and your name to log in and, and access 100% of your booking to where you can um, add seeds, you can add your contact information and so on. You just have full access to your book and add your sky miles numbers and things like that so you, can get, so you can get credit for your flight. So those are some of the details we deal with. I want to find out if anyone have any questions about the uh, flight itinerary, the flight sequence, or anything dealing with the uh, Ghana visa. And it's uh, star six, go meet yourself. All right, uh, greetings, uh, Barbara. Um, go ahead with your question. Did you say the flight itinerary was the same as November as it will be for May 2019? No, it's not the same itinerary. It's literally the flight itinerary is different, you, but you'd have to look at the flight itinerary to see the difference. Uh, but the, all of the flights go to Amsterdam. So the current flight okay. schedule with the show on both tours is a little bit different as far as departure and things like that. Okay. All right. That was my only question. Thank you. Aren't you welcome. This is Robin. I'm not clear on when we file for the visa as far as um, – I want to go May in 2019. So do I file for the visa now? Everyone make sure everything is clear on this one. 
All right, if you're traveling in May, cannot apply for a visa now. You're um, almost a year away from traveling. Um, what I'm talking about is for the people that are traveling in November. If you're looking to travel in May next year, what I talked about is a plan for the visa in the beginning of next year, uh, and which will give you more than enough time. And also the flight itinerary that I have. Once you pay a deposit, I will uh, book flight reservations for you. As far as those who have committed to the tour for May, flight schedule of, is not available right now. We still have to wait for another two weeks. The uh, only uh, group uh, that I have flight uh, reservations for is for the November group. Everyone who have made a deposit, we have that taken care of. And uh, let me know if that's uh, clear for you. I am cleared. Thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. All right. Uh, the next person, can you repeat your name, where you're calling from, and then your question? Yes. Please? My name is Lidani, and I have a question. Um, I'm in the West Coast. Um, what would be best for me to meet? In Atlanta, or to go directly to Amsterdam? If you're, you said West Coast. If you're in LAX or Seattle, your flight goes directly to Amsterdam. Okay, so the, I can leave from LA to directly to Amsterdam. Yes, exactly. Amsterdam is our meetup point for 100% of our tour group. Okay. All of us are all over the United States: uh, East, West Coast, Midwest, Southwest. Are we going to talk about uh, business opportunities? Uh, not so much. Um, I don't really want to talk about business opportunities. I want to get people clear and prepared for the tour because the problem that we have is people are not clear and prepared for the tour. So it's, if you're not clear about the tour, investments and things like that is literally not really something we talk talking big on. But for those who want to know more about the repatriation investments, please go to the YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007. Uh, there's links for repatriation investment conference, at least over about 40, 50 videos. Talk about acquiring land. Uh, you have a presentation where people who live and do business there in Ghana talking. So a lot of things that we're going to deal with is information that we want individuals to look over. Uh, that way when we get to Ghana, we can talk more clearly about investments and then give people ideas who want to put money down on land and things like that. But we're a little bit far away from that for both of these groups. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. This is uh, Carl J. Hughes from uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, my question is, um, what is the cutoff for someone joining the November tour, November 2018 tour? Yes, there's really no uh, cutoff. Um, we have space of 35 people. Uh, the seats fill up uh, this month that we're closing the tour. This is based on space available. We're looking to take one full bus of people around the country. So the best thing that we recommend is if, you come, if you're interested in traveling the tour, is to put a $400 deposit down that holds your seat, and I'll also book flight reservations for you. All right, uh, does anybody have any question about the uh, Ghana visa or what we literally just talked about before we move on? Um, I have a, yes, I have a question. This is Michelle. I have a question about the uh, flight accommodation. Um, it's me and it's a total family of five. With the flight, is everybody going to be seated together or we're going to have our own uh, seat assignment? As far as the family of five, um, we can put you in one full section in the middle of all five seats. Uh, we, can put, we can work it around. But the reality of the situation is once you um, uh, get you finalized in the system in two months before we travel, um, you can just uh, connect and log in with your family booking, and then you can move seats around as you feel um, that works for you, but uh, naturally what we do is just try our best to put uh, parties of two, five, and families in general uh, close together in the same seat. And All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, does anyone have any uh, more questions about, uh, we just talked about the visa and flight preparation and flight options? All right, uh, Jonathan uh, is here with me. Uh, he's going to be one of our tour assistants, and he's, he's committed to the uh, journey for November coming up. Uh, Jonathan, you did your visa last year. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, share with people your process if you had any issues or anything, but the same information I sent was the right. same thing I sent to you. Okay. Greetings, family. This is uh, Brother Jonathan Hill. Uh, I'll be coming uh, with everybody on the November tour. Uh, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, and um, I, like many of you, uh, have heard and seen uh, Bomani's work, whether that's through the social media, YouTube, uh, or in person. Um, 
as far as the uh, process to get the visa, uh, the process was pretty simple from following the directions from the uh, email that he sent out. Everybody should have a email that he sent out with the four or five different attached files. It should show a, a one of his his visas and give an example. Another one is with uh, straight up directions um, that shows uh, uh, the step by step process of what to do. Um, I was able to um, send in my visa and get it back within a relatively short time frame, so it shouldn't really be any issues. Um, I got a two to five year uh, visa and uh, that's going to work out for me. So yeah, if anybody has any questions, just please ask. Yes, let me know if anybody has any last minute uh, questions and then we're going to go into uh, tour preparation and then we're going to close the call. All right, uh, back to the uh, Ghana Tour November 2018 tour link. Uh, last we left off at the Ghana Visa Guidelines. Um, below that is the tour preparation, what to pack, uh, Ghana culture and customs, Ghana language, uh, tree translation, and improving your immune system. Now, as far as the preparation part, what I'm going to do is uh, open up the departure and reminder list. Now, the departure reminder list is on the tour uh, list for May and November, and also uh, someone asked about the itinerary. All itineraries you have access to on the website online. We want to make sure that everybody have 100% of the same information. Uh, so. Everything is there that we can possibly think of that uh, you'd need to be clear on before you actually go on a tour. Um, so that's just us uh, laying all the cards out in front of you. And then the YouTube videos is the best thing to really watch because um, all of the tours that we have done in the past, we just have highlights of it. Only thing I want to let everyone know that some of the things that you see on previous tour, you may not necessarily be doing it on another tour. Example. Um, I got a few footage, well, a lot of footage from the Braunhofer region, but I don't have that on that tenor for the next uh, two tours. Uh, so we took advantage of the opportunity when we went to the waterfalls, went to the Permaculture Institute, and then shot a lot of videos as much as possible to share. Uh, and these are also to share information so that people know the different things in, the, in a country like Ghana where if other people may be interested in doing certain things. They can you know, do the research and go to some of those locations, but Ghana is a big country, 10 regions, and we've been around six of those 10 regions. And next year, the next region we'll, we'll visit that we never visit will be uh, the Western region with Takarati. So that'll be seven of the 10 regions. And then we're looking forward to this in the future sometime to visit um, at least one or two out of the three Northern regions uh, there in Ghana. All right, so um, I'm gonna click on departure and reminder list for your journey November 2018. And you can do the same, um, and it's the same information for the May tour. All right, so what I want to do is just, uh, go through some of these things. Uh, number one, all of the Ghana tour November 2018 documentation can be found on our website or from the main menu of our website. Uh, and that's africaforafricans.org. Uh, two, gratuities prior to departure. Africa for Africans will collect tips for hospitality services that will be provided in Ghana. This amount is based off the numbers of confirmed tour participants. This will serve as a separate charge for the tour and will be collected on the departure date upon arrival at Atlanta or Amsterdam airport or in Ghana if we don't connect with you uh, during that time. Total per person uh, is $50. So this is the, uh, the one of two things that's not included in the uh, tour package, the $50 uh, group tips and also your lunch. Now this uh, $50 tip uh, will allow us to expedite service. Uh, you can give additional tips to anyone who, you, who gives you great service or whoever you choose. This is basic tips for all after Ghana staff, crew, including drivers, guides at all sites, hotel staff and entertainment. All other services can be provided on this tour are a tip if you choose base. So we're just trying to make it simplify with the tipping and you can just do uh, more so beyond that. Number three, when you visit, do not come with a romanticized notion about Ghana slash Africa or you will be disappointed and unnecessarily frustrated. Come with open eyes and an open mind knowing that Ghana is a developing nation. There is much to do and we can be a positive contributory part of it. Keep in mind that Ghana slash Africa is not America or Europe, nor do we want it to be. 
We are Mother Africa children returning home and want to be a part of Mother Africa growth and development. Right? For uh, Delta Airlines e-ticket, as we talk about the flight reservations, uh, to log in, uh, go to delta.com, then click on My Trips and enter your name and confirmation number to access your flight information. Now, these details I'm talking about is uh, details that you, uh, you won't be able to access until 45 to 60 days before your tour departure. Five, make sure you secure your personal documents, including password, tickets, etc. Scan a copy of these documents and save to your email and leave copy with family. So those are just ideas of things you can do with your secure documents. Six, please verify all travel documents and have them secured for your travel date. Seven, arrive at the airport two to three hours to give yourself enough time to check in, go through security, and get on the flight. Uh, somehow, if you are booked and you have reservations with us and you miss your flight or something happened, you, it's up to you directly to just reach out to Delta Airlines, fix your flight sequence, and then send us an email with uh, whichever flight you're coming on. Uh, you can always try to also uh, send us a message uh, through WhatsApp or just any just online media like uh, Facebook, and we can just look out for your communication. But while we're traveling in Amsterdam, we have little uh, flexibility with communication as far as phones and things like that because we're in two different uh, you know, countries and across two different uh, continents. Uh, number eight, uh, check uh, bags. So uh, two check bags each with a 50-pound limit per bag. Make sure your bags are secure with a lock and name tag. If you choose not to do that, that is up to you. Uh, but uh, we have had situations where uh, it's so much of us and we're moving in and we have one or two bags with no name tags. Once I see bags with no name tags, honestly, it's something that I don't want to deal with. I push it to the side. We do the security at the airport. That's between you and them. Um, we almost had someone got their bags taken away and got it uh, destroyed because it was just in the middle of nowhere and everybody's gone. And, and also, when you're on tour, make sure you label every single last bag that you have, camera bag, camcorder bag, things like that, because if one of our folks find your bag, they'll see your name on it and we'll get it to you. Uh, and so those are the, the simple basic things that uh, we just have to all focus on our own possessions and do things like the tag. So if something is misplaced, we know if you have an iPad or, and things like that, you can always put a label on the back, um, a sticky or something. But these are just, again, things that we're just sharing based on travel experience. You definitely have to make sure you verify all labeling of your bag direct to ACC. So if you leave them from Atlanta, your bag should say ATL to ACC. And the ACC is just the part which sort of your final destination. So once it's in Amsterdam and the, the guys in, um, in the baggage department see a bag, they, the only thing they know is that it goes to Accra on the next flight. And it's only, so there's only one flight going to um, Ghana uh, from Amsterdam, and that's how the sequence of the bags work. Put your receipt, uh, your password, and your ticket. Um, make sure that's all organized again. Uh, Delta charge $100 uh, for overweight bags of 51 to 70 pounds and $200 for additional check bags. So if you decide to check a third bag, it's $200, or a fourth bag, it's, it'll be $400. No bags are allowed over 70 pounds. And uh, note, uh, put all liquids over three ounces in your uh, check bag unless you want uh, security to throw it away because anything over three ounces, they're going to dispose of it. Uh, and anything that you're kind of worry about, just uh, put it in your check bags. Uh, nine, uh, carry-on bags. You may carry one bag and one personal item at no charge. Please note that all items must easily fit in the overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. Uh, Ten, when packing luggage, remember, less is better. You will want to purchase clothing and artifacts to bring back. So the idea we always give out is that uh, bring school supplies and things like that that you want to get rid of, and that way you have more space to put more things on your return. Eleven, bring a set of wipes for when we go to the Holocaust dungeons. Uh, that's what we always wear, um, uh, wipes. From since we started going there, with the exception of 06. Uh, red, black, and green, and gold clothing to pay homage to our ancestors. And the red, black, and green uh, gold combination for Ancestor Day 1. Uh, Ancestor Day 1 is when I've, we visit a Sin Man, so, and uh, welcome to Elmina. So when we're leaving from Kumasi, 
that's what you're going to see on the itinerary. And you just, it's just paying homage to our ancestors on both days. Um, the first ancestral day, Ascend Man, so it deals with us going to what you would consider the debt march, where our ancestors marched down from the northern region. And the location of Sin Man, so is where our ancestors took their last bath before they were auctioned off to either Elmina or Capo's dungeons. So once we, once we finish that day and go to Elmina, we get to process that whole movement. And then two days later, we're there at the Holocaust dungeon. Or I should say in this case, a day later, we're there at the Holocaust dungeon. And all of that will come together. So the journey we take you on, it builds a kind of sequence. Uh, and then it takes you to locations that uh, whether you are, you know, whether you are, you know, university professor. Or so a lot of these things are things that are not laid out in history books and things. So even when I did Togo and Benin, people were like, how do you find these places? I was like, it's research. You know, this is these things are historic, and the only thing is, we have to make it important. You know, so uh, these things are, are, are on every single itinerary that we do. Uh, business conference, uh, things doing with African ancestors, repatriation, and that's what defines the uh, program. We talk about the uh, school supplies, so uh, we usually have um, anywhere from two to three schools that we deal with. Anything out your heart is good. Uh, you can bring also financial donations. Uh, 13, Ghana to November 16th, group 6 p.m. meetup and greet at the Atlanta airport. All right, so that is the time that I have, and we're going to be talking about that. And that is for everyone who lives here and the people that are connecting flights. Uh, by that time, we should all be there to connect and meet up, and that will be the first of the, the two connections. All right, once you get to Atlanta, ask the Delta agent to direct you to the Amsterdam departure gate. Our flight departs at 8.08 uh, p.m. and arrives the next day at 10.45 in Amsterdam. We'll meet the... The entire group in Amsterdam, November 17 at 12.30 p.m. for our group departure at 2.25 p.m. to Ghana. Right? And some of these things we are repeating, but uh, those are the important details also. 14, bring any necessary medicine that you may need. And that's not something that I personally would know. It's just something that you would know based on your, you know, your health and wellness and you talking with your doctor. 15, uh, camera camcorder, bring extra film or memory card, and rechargeable batteries. If you have electronics, bring a converter, foreign adapters, and an extension cord. Unlock iPhone or Samsung Galaxy so we can set up you with a mobile SIM card and assist you with your own mobile network to give you wireless access during the entire tour. Now, this is one of the situations where I have a, um, my phone is an unlocked phone, so I got a SIM card here in Ghana, and I was able to just add minutes and also uh, get data minutes to where I can use my laptop and use my other US phone which have my online apps and things like that. Uh, so it's something that I won't be able to share our wireless network with anyone and there's no disrespect that's being answered everyone. Everyone have the same opportunity for what we're sharing. Um, I need my network for all the business stuff that we're doing there. Uh, so when we're on the bus, you will see a network that says Bomani Technologies, my network, and unfortunately I can't let you connect to it so but I'm showing you the secret of what I'm doing is just getting that unlock phone and if you don't know what to type in in Amazon or eBay type in AT&T unlock phone and um, what you're looking for is a phone where you can just add a SIM card to it and th that phone is perfect because wherever you go whether you go to Jamaica where you go to you know, another, any other part of the world, it's the same system that's used, uh, GSM SIM card. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think I want to say about half of the carriers in America are not unlocked. So if you have like Boost Mobile and, you know, and Sprint, your phone is usually a lock. So all that technical information, I don't want to confuse anyone, with, but that's what, uh, if you want to have internet the whole time and you want to have a, a phone where you can call anywhere in the world, including where you are in America, bring an unlocked phone. And if you don't know if your phone is locked or unlocked, then you have to speak to your carrier and to be clear. So you can use, if your phone is unlocked, you can bring your regular U.S. phone, but you'd have to take out your U.S.-based SIM card and then put the Ghana SIM card in. And then just make sure you secure your SIM card that when we get back to the U.S., you can use it. So these are all the technical terms and things that we want to help people with ahead of time and want the clarity to be out there that way. 
a day or two days before we leave, we don't have like a bunch of unnecessary text messages and email about what we what do I need to bring, what do I need to carry. It's all on this list. It's all the thing, same things we've been talking about for well over a decade. Uh, we just want everyone to kind of just do their research and do their work, look over stuff, and then that way we can have a better conversation on your preparation. All right, uh, 16, travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bag, compact, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. Uh, when you're in Ghana with us in May and November, there's a chance one or two days it may rain. Uh, you're either before the rainy season or after the rainy season, so you're still in the, the essence of this, the rainy season. 17, mosquito spray or repellent or cinchinella oil, which is an excellent insect repellent. Avoid wearing scented uh, lotion or oils. Mosquitoes like sweet scents. Note, uh, most of these sprays have dangerous chemicals, so do your research for the safest thing to use. And I'm going to stop at 17 and then uh, open up for questions and then we'll continue from 18 to 30 on this uh, preparation departure list. So family, it's uh, star six to unmute yourself and just give your name and where you're calling from and your question. And my name is Ron Bizzle. How are you doing, Greetings? Hey, uh, greetings, brother Ron. Uh, good to hear from you. How are you doing? Hey, Ron, your guide and share, Jeff, and share uh, if you want to give some advice on, you know, your expertise of traveling. Yeah, thanks, Bermond. Greetings, Bermond. Greetings, uh, guest, uh, future guest for uh, 2018, 2019. Uh, uh, so hello to Brother Jonathan. I haven't spoke to him in a while. Enjoy the brother. He's a good brother. Hey, brother. Yeah, all right. Uh, yes, uh, uh, first I'd like to congratulate everyone on their uh, plans and their commitment to travel to the motherland. Um, also, uh, like even to those who are just listening in for future travel, uh, you deserve a graduation and a congratulation on that also. But uh, I probably Bomani covered a few of these things about when you travel, about uh, keeping your uh, mainly being prepared, prepared, keeping your uh, prepared with uh, mainly like it uh, the information that he has on his website. Uh, if you go to the website, you can prepare yourself by going through all the different uh, portals that he has, which uh, come in handy for you before you travel. Uh, it'll just make things uh, more uh, controlled and, uh, and uh, so you can have uh, things at your fingertips. Uh, some things, many things you can purchase there. Uh, they have malls, they have stores. So, But... Uh, one other thing I'd like to share with you is, um, oh, yeah, I mentioned, well, Monty probably mentioned that I travel quite a bit. Uh, I do a lot of travel between Ghana and Senegal. And I'll probably be in Ghana at the end of November, sometime in December, before I go to Senegal, but I won't be on the tour with uh, the 2018 guests. Uh, but uh, I sure miss it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, you're going to enjoy yourself. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just... Uh, Hopefully, I'll just run into you sometime at the end of the tour if I, if I make it. But I'll yield at this point. Uh, enjoy your tour. I really appreciate you uh, giving my five minutes of fame. Thank you, uh, Bumani. Yeah, uh, Ron, always I appreciate you uh, uh, chiming in and uh, sharing your, your experience. If uh, you want to share with people um, your incredible travel experience and the key to how you move around all these different countries around the world and just have a peace of mind at the same time. Yes, uh, de definitely definitely keep your eyes open, uh, especially with your personals and things like that, from the airport to the bus, bus to inside. You don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to alarm you or anything, but you do that here. You do it anywhere you travel in the world. The same procedure, same, same, uh, it's, it's the same get up. Um, just make sure that you uh, follow all the instructions that are given. Uh, make sure that you, if you have any questions, go through the tour guide or, or through, uh, Someone there that's 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 working with Bomani. Uh, if it's something that's important, um, and relay that to them, uh, so you can follow their directions. Uh, that way, because when we're traveling in a group, uh, time is an essence, um, and 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 uh, the availability availability to, to to move a large group of people is is, is very essential. So it's essential to make sure that uh, we st stay on schedule close as we can. So. 
those are some of the things that you have to stay on top of. It's not a lot of work. It's just it's just a matter of just following what's in. When you get to probably somewhere before you get to Ghana, you'll get your tour book and and read up on that book. It's a beautiful book. It has everything that you need to know to go in the tour. Uh, read that book. It, 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 it really helps you out quite a bit. How are you, brother? I appreciate uh, you, brother. Uh, one of the things that you and I was talking about on the um, when I came back from Ghana on the uh, last tour was uh, the fact that uh, you know we're always looking at things and seeing how we can make things more efficient for people. And one of the things I always talk about is just the uh, you know we usually have one or two people that you know sometimes I don't understand how they get on the tour because you know this tour is specifically for the type of people that majority of people that we travel with. Uh, so that's why it's so important for people to follow the rules and follow the flow of what we're doing because we don't want one or two people to throw off a whole group of people who have committed themselves and prepare for this journey and everything. So like example, I had two people uh, that was completely on the left field the whole time and um, you know, it's just like playing be uh, baseball. It's like, you know, you just, they're just completely away from what was going on. Um, we don't do five-star accommodations at white home establishments, so I was completely thrown off with that request. And if that request was given up front, I would have just been honest, saying that we have we're building a black uh, experience in Ghana, and it's important that uh, we support the black-owned enterprises there. The only difference is the hotel does not say the Hilton or the Marriott; they say the Michelin. It's owned by a black man and a black woman, a Ghanaian. Um, they have been the best people I've ever met to do business with at that home hotel. So I'm so it's like why would I give someone else the money who doesn't give us that personal feel and that home feel and then they always send like s several of the guys out to make sure that nothing happens to us when we go out to nightclubs and do all kind of things and good luck on going to somewhere else like you know the Hilton and Marriott and just having that personal feel but uh, you know for anyone that does that you know to me it's just it's just blatantly dis disrespectful and it, it's you know it's one of the things that we're trying to just push more for. Our brothers and sisters to respect and support black owned business and you know you know we had one or two situations that happened over the years that have happened and I felt like if I was white which that would be a curse for me um, people wouldn't treat me that way or if I was a lot older you know so whether it's someone a young black man running a business enterprise and is doing the work you respect them and show them love and don't just do things that you normally wouldn't do uh, so it's something where we have had to just have these conversations around because we realize that any of these things and this misbehavior can just throw off all these wonderful people that commit to this journey and have just reach out to us and just talk about how much it has changed their life. You know, so we put in the uh, general terms on the bottom of all the general terms now that uh, we don't want anyone with like uh, elitist attitude to come on the tour, uh, whether you a general in the military or you um, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, where you know you're our customer and we, you're here to enjoy the journey of a lifetime and the only way we can do that is if you show us the proper level of respect and flow with everybody else and just enjoy it. The good thing about the journey, it's only for you know 10 to 14 days so for someone that literally felt like they came on the wrong trip which I can't see how, just flow, go to flow and then you know you may you know you, you can just go off into your life and you don't have, have to deal with us again but it's very important that we don't ever compromise safety, security, for one or two people. Uh, we had a, a sister that was very disrespectful, got off, uh, we told her we were leaving and then I told her we were leaving and she can and please have a seat so we can leave and this lady wants to get off the bus to chase behind a tour guide that shouldn't be out there running and looking for people. You know, we have to be on schedule. Uh, I've worked for Delta Airlines for several uh, years and you know, when I go up there and the plane is fixed and it's they, they a lot to do, I've seen people out there like upset but it's like the time is like you know they go by a time schedule because uh, you know, another plane has to come in with our situation we're on the move because we have a lot of things on our itinerary to do and then we also have safety protocol we're never telling people not to do something for no reason you know, and things like that and if you do decide to run off a bus be careful because if you run off a bus you're in Ghana and wherever you are more than likely a vehicle is going to be driving by there sooner or later so um, a lot of those things we talk about for safety security and um, even so, when I tell any brother or sister, when you're traveling with us, be careful about the people that you're going to meet. I have no control over. I've been there. I've been traveling to Ghana for almost 12 years. 
a lot of people are going to say they know me, and we, I'm sure we know each other and we're cool, uh, but that doesn't change anything with your connection with them. Uh, make sure that you get to know who you're doing business with, who you're committing with, who you're, getting, who you're going to marry, who you're going to get into a relationship with, who you're going to get a visa from, who you're going to, you're going to give a visa and all those things. All those are things that have gone wrong at some time or that. Yeah? And, you know, I have to be the person to be responsible. If something happens to anybody's family members, if, you know, you, you know, they're going to, you know, you're going to say what happened, whether it's, you know, they meet a, a suave Ghanaian, Ghanaian guy that's super off our feet, you know, it all comes back to me. And I'm trying to do my best to make, to contribute, to make us connected in Africa so we can build a future for those of us who are interested in that. I'm never pushing that on everyone. So all of these things that we talk about for that, for that complete purpose, of making sure that uh, everything goes smooth. So Ron, yeah, so that's uh, what you and I was talking about. And you know, we just, over the years, you and I have just keep on going through this as we share more and more information about how to move around in, in Africa and be safe. Uh, so yeah. yeah, so just, you know, everybody just watch out for people who just want to just connect with you right away and talk about, I got land, I'm a prince, I'm a king, I, you know. I love you long time, you know, all those things. I traveled in the United States Navy and plus my traveling in, in, in the airlines and this personal travel to six continents, 30-something countries, and it is some characters around the world that you meet. <laughs> and let me add to this, Bomani. Let me add to this real quick, if you don't mind. Um, Bomani, Bomani's not trying to scare you or anything, but he's giving you tips from people that don't know. Is What happens is when they see tourists around the world, and when they see a bus, a tourist bus, I'm talking about the people who are, who are haters or someone that can, you know, do you no good. They know that you're from, that you're a tourist. They know that you're touring. They know that you have money. Those things. Just be, just be wise. That's all he's saying. Be wise. Yeah, absolutely, Ron. I appreciate that. Uh, in so many words, that's exactly what we're talking about. But um, well, I have you on here, I'm going to just go back to the last set of things that we have. Uh, right now, the uh, Ghana exchange rate uh, probably change again. Uh, it's uh, if you have 100 US dollars, you get 4.3 to 4.5 uh, Ghana CD. So for 100 US dollars, you're going to get uh, 430 to 450 Ghana CDs based on the literally exchange rate at that time when you get there. Um, so it usually fluctuate here and there uh, daily. Uh, another uh, most other uh, thing that we want you to understand is that it's. It's, kind of, it's different, but you have to bring fifty and hundred dollar bills to get the best exchange rate. So, example, if you bring fifties and hundred, you get closer to four point five, and if you bring smaller bills, twenties and tens, that's closer to four point three, even less. And then any other bill beyond that is not acceptable. Uh, Nineteen, bring as much cash as you think you would need. Four hundred to eight hundred dollars is just a basic recommendation. Uh, note: the only thing that you have to pay for is your fifty dollar group tip and uh, your daily lunch, if you eat lunch. Bring a Visa card to access ATMs. MasterCard are not so much recommended but uh, because of lack of ATM machines, but they do have access to it, especially when we go to the mall. And when you're in Ghana with us, we're, we're there in Accra, in Isagon, which is right there by the Accra Mall. And then when we're in Kumasi, right there by the uh, Kumasi Mall. And these are big malls with, you know, these are the, the main city malls. Also, important note, uh, make sure you call your bank to let them know that uh, you're traveling so they can put a travel notice on your uh, card or else you may have issues if you decide to use your card later. But the good thing about it, you can still call Adam's number, but you're just going to spend a little, uh, got, you know, your, your Ghana minutes uh, for, for calling. Uh, 20, uh, the weather is going to be in its low 70s to mid 80s. Uh, like Jamaica, bring light clothing, sandals, shorts walking shoes, sundress, tank tops, swimwear, etc. Swimwear because we are going to have access to a few pools uh, in Accra and Kumasi at the Mikulin. The pool is real, real nice. Uh, and uh, my little boy will be out there swimming also. And it's just, if you just want to cool off, that's the uh, option. Uh, casual slash African clothing for certain nights, uh, nightlife and evening events at business, uh, networking conference, uh, welcome and farewell dinners. So the main thing is... Um, is you're packing a lot of different clothes for different um, environments, but it's all up to you. Um, just think about all the things that we're going to do in the itinerary, just being out in the daytime, and if we're doing a lot of, which we're going to be doing a lot of walking, so you want to be as comfortable as possible. Uh, 21, no photos taken allowed at airports, state office building, and other government facilities. Your film will be confiscated 
and you could be arrested. The last time something like this happened was like the worst time it could ever happen in a lifetime is when you're crossing borders. Uh, last time I was in, I think I was crossing from Togo going on into Ghana and or it, it, I don't remember, this is so crazy, but one of those stops, I have no idea why someone decided to go to the window and take pictures of the security officers. You know, that really upset them. So they came on the bus and I just, I just like, you know what, let them on the bus and then do what they need to do. So they just, they took the person and detained them for a little bit, which delayed us. Uh, but it's, you know, we just have to respect our, our country's laws, airports, vessels, and operation. Yeah, and, and that's my secret of travel. I just respect what everyone do, every, regardless of my beliefs or whatever, and I just treat everything professionally, and I have no issues traveling the last 20 years of my life, from 20 to now 40. You know, even when I'm traveling in the Southern African, in the, in the South American countries uh, by myself, and you know, you know, you just follow certain protocols and you, you make it home safe. Other than that, things can get messy. But the good thing about it, we're, we're the professionals that are taking you there, and we are 24/7 monitoring to where you know we are, you know we're looking out for you the whole time, unless you decide to just you know go off and on your own. All right, uh, let me uh, speed to next set of things. Uh, 21 uh, after tour does not uh, offer travel insurance, so I do have a link uh, that say passporthealthusa.com, and so that's what we recommend you just. Uh, get uh, travel insurance if you choose to do that. 23, toiletries including toilet tissues, soaps, feminine napkins, wet wipes, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towel, laundry soap, and more. Uh, so these are just more just ideas based on things that some people need. Uh, all the information and the list is not relevant to every individual. Uh, 24, Ghanaians are very friendly. However, be wary of people who just want to make quick money off you and make promises they cannot keep. You should know as much as possible about people you're planning to do business with. Like, I just, I never understand this one. Like, I do my best to bring people to a country and connect them and try to make sure they're safe. And then people end up giving strange people, like, lots of money. And then they come to me and say, that person took my money. And I'm like, well, they are part, they have ECOWAS status. Um, they can go to any of the 18 countries in Africa. Let me know which one you want to start searching for them because that's how easy it is. Uh, so everything that we're telling you, once again, is not the scariest because everything that we're telling you is because things have happened in the past. And um, we just want to make sure of, you know, people that we live in the same country with, our brothers and sisters are protected when they travel into the country that we're looking to build business with, Ghana. So there's no issue where they, the people are like, oh, well, I went, I tried to do things in Ghana and I can't do business in Ghana because they're in a different mindset. And what I realized in life is just that if I'm looking to do business in any country in the world, Costa Rica, Russia, I need to learn the culture of how things work in that country and build my connections because other than that, I can be taken for a ride just like here in America, which is, is less chance of those things because of certain things in the system and most of us, you know, we do our research and we do certain things. And then, you know, you always can get a good lawyer to fix that problem. In Ghana, not so much. You can get the best. You can get Johnny Cochran to come up from his grave, and he still can't help you in this situation because of the way the culture is laid out and people dip off. But it hurts me. It breaks my heart because those Ghanaians don't represent the Ghanaians that we're looking to build with. And just like any country you go with, you're going to have your underworld of just thieves and crooks and shysters. So, you know, we just have to be street smart. Uh, 25, um, games for leisure time, social gatherings, and tournaments, including decks of cards, dominoes, chess, board games, etc. 26, uh, emergency things, flashlight, basic first aid kit, laxative, Pepto-Bismol, uh, and a bunch of other than, like Western devil medicine. But, you know, it, I'm not saying to bring these things, but uh, note that these medicines are not all natural, but do your research on the safest thing to bring. Because I... My body is different from other people. I mean, I'm, I just, I, going to Ghana for me is like walking across the street. Um, and it's just, that's how I feel. Um, but I always tell people, don't do what I do because I'm just a different uh, type of person. I've, you know, uh, with the whole traveling and, you know, some people say, should you take malaria medicine or malaria pills? I say, you know, I never took them before and I probably never will take them. But if that makes you comfortable, I would say go for it. But, uh, but beyond that, just really just talk to someone you trust uh, about your health and wellness, like your actual uh, doctor or health practitioner. 
Uh, 27, please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by others or get caught up into complaining. This is an experience that will have its ups and downs. It's a part of your introduction to Ghana slash Africa. We recommend you go with the flow and enjoy your, your time in paradise around the wonderful itinerary that we put together on this journey. Um, just want to be honest with everybody. The journey and the itinerary is what it is. Um, we can do a lot more things to make it different, but all the things that we could change of it, it wouldn't be the same tour. You know, uh, like One Africa, One Africa does not have no AC or hot water, but there's also only 12 rooms, so we always have another hotel called Almond Tree, which um, they have hot water in every room. So if that's something that you just have to have, uh, make sure you send me a message that you, so I can put you in that hotel on our final three days in, uh, you know, in Ghana in November and May. Uh, that is just set up to give you an incredible experience. Uh, there's, a, there's a fan in the room. The windows open. You're right there by the ocean. It's nice and cool. The water is not, you know, the water is not cold. It's actually warm and cool. And the last time I took a shower, there was like 95 degrees. And I, I was just joking around with people that, that there's no way I could take a hot shed. I'll literally melt, you know, because I'm so chocolate. But the reality of it is, is it's just a mindset for us. Uh, like I've never took a hot shower until uh, until I was 11 uh, when I first uh, when we moved into Jamaica to New York City and it's you know I understand the situation it's cold here and you don't want to be taking a warm shower but in Ghana it's hot so I just want people to process that because you have these I have these idiots on YouTube uh, that they just make stupid comments like some like a few people saying that that that, that I should that uh, I'm denying people basic you know basic necessities yeah, yeah, and I'm like the Micklin Hotel in Accra and Kumasi, AC, hot water, conference room. They have a complex with everything, security. It's a full resort. We'd be shame if we just take it African and just give you all these things because majority of people on the African continent, or I should say the majority of people in the entire world outside of America, it's a higher percentage of people who just don't have access to hot water. Yeah, so it's something that, uh, we don't. We want to take away all this privileged mindset and just get people to just being one with the environment. Because at the end of the day, if we're looking to move and do business in a country like Ghana, we're gonna to have to get to work to get used to certain things until we build what we need. Luxury is there, which is overpriced. But uh, connecting to a country like Ghana is not so much about that. Uh, and we don't want to give people the wrong idea. The bus is a nice high-tech bus, air, air conditioned, um, TV, reclining seats. So the tours are as luxury as you're going to get. Uh, so the one or two things that we have on the journey, we want you to be open to the experience itself. 28, uh, yellow fever card. If you don't want to take the yellow fever uh, vaccination, that's fine and up to you. You can get a waiver or any other paperwork, but it's required when you travel to Ghana. Last time I was in Ghana, the uh, officers were checking on arrival for your yellow fever card. So everyone, please get it. Um, I don't know the situation if you don't have the yellow fever card when you get to Ghana, but it's not something that we can deal with. So do your best to either get a yellow fever shot or get a waiver or get something other than not getting anything. Uh, 29, uh, when you get to baggage claim in Ghana, get your own free card and put your own bags on it. Make sure you have your check bag receipt from when you check uh, your bags uh, these numbers uh, need to match up. So the receipt uh, information that you have on your uh, check bags is what uh, the Ghanaian officers are going to look at when they're making sure that you're not leaving the airport with somebody else's bag. And um, once we're clear, just follow the lead as far as um, the pe list of people that we have that's directing us to the bus and don't let nobody push your cart. Don't let anyone push their cart and several people usually have people pushing their carts. And then they're going to want a tip. So once they do that, just make sure you just give them a tip. Um, but uh, we just do that because we just don't need anyone to push anybody's cart. We're just going to the bus. And then once you get to the bus, all of our guys just start loading the bags on the bus. All right, uh, 30. Uh, bring things to the Holocaust dungeons like several candles to light in the dungeons, uh, pictures of ancestors. So these are just all, also our recommendations. So this is the uh, so everything I just went over, family, is the uh, the 30 point preparation departure list, which is a summary of all the things that we'll talk about um, for the six month duration of preparation for the tour, and uh, the flight itinerary and the visa process. And last month we talked about the tour overview and the full itinerary.
so that's uh, so these uh, two calls literally covered 100% of the things that we talk about on these tours. So I want to open things up for questions, and then we're going to close in uh, five minutes. Are we going to the ancestor wall? If you look at itinerary in November, it will tell you that we're not going to the ancestor wall in prom prom, and we are going to it in uh, May. So that would have to answer. You have to answer your own question on that one. Depends on which tour you're going to. So no in November and yes in May. Uh, in May we have four days in Accra, which give us an extra day to go to prom prom and possibly go back to Erna's house. And yes, yeah, someone asked me, should we change money here? You cannot change Ghana CDs here in the U.S. You have to do it here in Ghana. Every day I have someone that's going to change money for you or we take you to a location every day. And uh, someone asked me about the uh, school supplies, and they did find information. But uh, once you're on our website, you'll see a school supplies uh, list. And those are some of the ideas, but I would just say bring the lightest, cheapest, simplest thing to bring um, for children and then... If nothing else, let's uh, bring cash uh, for donations. All right, so family, uh, does anybody have any questions before we close in the next uh, few minutes? If you don't mind, I'd like to give them one last uh, tip, if you don't mind. Uh, sure, go ahead, Ron. Okay, uh, future guest of uh, uh, African for the Africans, uh, dot org to, uh, tour, uh, make sure uh, most of the buying and shopping that you'll do, and I'm not talking about the mall shopping, I'm talking about the local shoppings. Uh, with the merchants and vendors, street vendors, uh, marketplaces. Wait, make sure you learn how the CD works and what it's worth, um, the exchange. Make sure that you learn how to barter. They'll let you know if your price gets too low. They won't take it. Don't, don't buy at the first price they throw out there. You'll learn as you go, but just make sure that you don't, you know, make sure that you, you, you're tough on your bartering. They, if it gets too low, they know what their bottom line is to give you a simple hint, and they won't take it if, if it's too low. So don't let them take you. That's just the way bartering works. And it works that way everywhere around the world. So just a hint, uh, and uh, I yield on that. Oh, absolutely. So yes, family, uh, line is open for questions. All right, so family, once again, all of the uh, details for this tour, 100% of everything that uh, we'll talk about, on the our conference call is all on our website, AfricaForAfricans.org. Just scroll through the main menu and you'll see all the information that you need and uh, all your tour details is on the literally the tour that you're looking to uh, travel on. So what I'm going to do is uh, click on South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe for November 2019, which is our highlight tour for next year. And then just uh, give an overview and then we'll close the call. All right, so family, we're heading to... Um, South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, November 22nd to December 4th. And this tour is, the main base of it is South Africa. That's November 22nd to the 30th of next year. Uh, now, this uh, part of the tour is for 3300 and that's a full uh, package that includes your flights from the U.S. on Delta Airlines to uh, South Africa and your round trip on South African Airlines from Johannesburg to Cape Town and back. It's an additional 400 for single supplement. Now, for those who are interested in the um, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe optional, that's November 29th to December 4th. That's 1,100 uh, for Zambia accommodations and round-trip flights on South African Airways from Johannesburg uh, to Livingstone Airport and back. Uh, so now, um, when you're there in Zambia, you're right there, and your neighbors are Botswana and Zimbabwe. So um, once we do the um, Victoria Falls, aspect of uh, Zambia. We do that for one day. Another day we'll go to Botswana. It's a river and a land safari. And Zimbabwe is just uh, cultural aspects of Zimbabwe uh, near a neighboring city. So we're not going to the, the main city in Zimbabwe. Everything that we're dealing with is just the neighboring aspect right there in Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. So it's an uh, incredible uh, itinerary. We wanted to do this for well over a decade, but um, once I went to South Africa in May and November of 2005, yes, 2005, 13 years ago, I was vastly dis disappointed. I figured if I go back again, it would change my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, it is, I, just, I just saw things that you know, remind me of watching those, you know, you know the Black Panther movies and, the, you know, and watching the civil rights movements and things like that. That's how I felt. I felt based on this. 
So I was like, this is not something that I can sell to my brothers and sisters. So South Africa has been pushed back, and then that's when Ghana came in, and then once Ghana came in, South Africa just kept on being pushed aside. But I like energy in South Africa. It seemed like a, a more of a, a black country nowadays. It's uh, more black power energy going. Uh, so this tour that we have set up here is uh, includes uh, transportation and tours throughout South Africa, transportation and tours throughout Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, if you want the optional, daily exercise and meditation, uh, daily continental breakfast, lunch, and gourmet dinner, and three- and four-star white-owned hotel accommodation, double occupancy. And I just have to be real with that because I just talked about Ghana and talked about how it was black itinerary. So, and it's... Um, we're using the chain that we used in the past, uh, Portia brand, and they'll provide the three hotels. Uh, they're based on three four-star accommodations to make sure everybody is comfortable. But that's the difference between the Ghana itinerary and the South Africa itinerary. But uh, you know, but then again, you know, the Ghana itinerary is the realest itinerary that we have. When you go to different parts of Africa, it's a different uh, sequence. Just like we're pushing um, Ethiopia and Tanzania, and it just didn't work out, lack of interest. I'm looking to set up also a nice uh, business investment session there in South Africa. We have a, we have a nice uh, repatriation energy there going on um, and just looking to connect with that energy some more. And we'll have a certified English uh, speaking uh, tour guide. And the only thing that's not included is the group tips. Now in this one, uh, it's uh, all meals are covered. So in Johannesburg, South Africa, we'll be there for three days. So we're going to be going to the Lesley uh, Cultural Village uh, based on the Cradle of Human Kind, Mandela House in uh, Orlando, West uh, Soweto, uh, Hector Pearson uh, Memorial and Museum, the Apartheid Museum, which is architectural interesting and packed with thoughtful, open, brutal reminders of South Africa history. Uh, the Old Fort at Constitution Hill and lodging at Potia Hotel in Johannesburg. So that's probably Pan-African as the, the itinerary get, which is just Johannesburg. Everything is like luxury. Uh, Cape Town, South Africa, three days. And in Cape Town, I, only, I went to Cape Town actually once, and that was um, May of 2005. Uh, this beautiful um, waterfront. District 6 Museum, uh, learn about apartheid history. Township tour, including Langa and Kileletu. Excuse me, I'm going to learn to pronounce, pronounce that word better soon. Uh, we're going to do the ferry to UNESCO uh, listed Robin Island for a tour to the former um, prison of political prisoner Nelson Mandela. Um, we spent 18 of the 27 years. A panoramic uh, sight over the city from the top of Table Mountain, Cape Town, Malay Quarter, and learn about the neighboring fascinating history, Castle of Good Hope, and Minerton Lighthouse, Cape Town Diamond Works, and see South Africa jewelry at its finest, Lajna Patia at um, Cape Town. Uh, Zambia, Botswana, and uh, Zimbabwe are uh, four days. So, um, Mose Oya Tunya, or the smoke that thunders, uh, which is called AKA Victoria Falls and Victoria Bridge in Zambia. In modern day term, Victoria Falls is known as the greatest curtain of fallen water in the world. Shopping at uh, Marumba Market is the biggest uh, market in Livingston, Zambia. Kazungulu uh, border across over Botswana using a speedboat. Cross over Zambezi River from Zambia to Botswana for boat cruise on Chobe River and a 4x4 game drive through uh, Chobe National Park. Uh, tour of Victoria Falls and town in, Zim in Zimbabwe and learn about uh, the roots and culture of the people. Uh, so the only thing that's dangerous on here is those safaris. It's a river safari and a land safari. So we're just going to have a lot of safety um, things we talk about because we don't want nobody to get eaten by no animals. Uh, so I, don't, I never did any of that stuff before. <laughs> I, mean, I never did that before because... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I mean, it's, I tell you, probably like, it's like literally different. Uh, but, I just, you know, um, people have showed interest in it. Uh, we have had a lot of people, so... We're building it, and uh, we'll be there and hanging out with some fresh footage. So hopefully I can con convince one of our folks to do the bungee jumping and those crazy stuff so we can uh, film it because, you know, I'm not that adventurous and come to those things. But this is a fun, fun filled adventure, especially if you've been to Ghana with us and you want to do something else. Uh, only thing I would say that would be just as good was if we had the uh, Ethiopia and the, 
the tens and the itinerary are going. So those are the itineraries that we're looking to do in the future uh, as much as possible. But uh, right now, um, if one of those itineraries don't work out, we just you know, put in a Ghana tour like we did in November, which we've had great feedback. So right now, it's uh, 16 of us um, set uh, for Ghana for November and the same for um, May. And then right now, South Africa is uh, six of us. So um, we're building that energy. And the closer we get to the, the May uh, tour for next year, the closer we'll talk specifically about that one and the same thing with other ones for 2019. So family, before I close, I just want to find out if anybody have any questions about anything or if you have any questions about this South Africa tour or even the uh, Brazil one that uh, we have on the website. As a matter of fact, Ron, uh, last I remember you had to talk about, about uh, you coming on a journey to South Africa with us. So. You're going to help me make sure people don't, don't do crazy stuff when it comes to the safaris. <laughs> well, you know, if the trade is willing, uh, I'll be with you, Bomani, uh, 2019. Absolutely. South Africa. Uh, people, I, I was, uh, what I was speaking about with the bartering real quick, um, uh, re re respect the, uh, the merchants there, respect the, uh, the people. I don't, I don't mean to think, to say, make you think that you're going to take somebody. Because a lot of the people, they really don't make a lot of money. I'm just saying that be wise about your exchange. If, uh, just like somebody said, if they say it's 12 CDs, you just remember that's going to be three U.S. dollars. Okay? Just make sure that uh, you still respect them. Most of the vendors that are around the hotels and stuff, most, most of the ones that you'll see, you might, I don't want to give anything away. But mo um, when, when, just be respectful. Uh, like I said, in the marketplaces, they have their bottom line. But other places on the street, street vendors and things like that, just, just mind that uh, you keep your mathematics straight. So, you know, because I, I don't like to really uh, play around with people, especially if they, have, if they have a set price, that's it. But, you know, usually by when you're shopping and things like that, you, you barter. I yield. Uh, yes, brother. Appreciate energy. So, family, we have a lot of people on the call. Just want to find out if anybody have any questions before we close off the night. Uh, and it's star six to unmute yourself. Uh, Nichelle, uh, can you hear me? Uh, go ahead. Um, you had a few questions. Um, I saw a message that said you couldn't hear us or something from the online feed. Oh, yes. I was trying to connect through the computer, but I'm actually on the phone, so I don't know if it's with free conference call. But one question I do want to know, um, one thing about the exchanging the money from the dollars to the Ghana exchange rate, when do we do that? Do we do that before we leave? Like do we go to the bank and do that or can we do it at the airport or do we wait until we get to Ghana? All, your, all of your money exchange you do in Ghana every day. Um, so we'll have people set up to do that when you get to Ghana with us. Um, and it's, you have, it's, uh, you have, we're right there in Accra and Kumasi by the, uh, both city malls uh, that have tons of ATM machines and everything. So you, are, you have all those things right accessible to you. And when you get to One Africa, Amicus um, will exchange all of your money. So I'll save some for her. So it's, it's something that we have set up ready to go. Okay. And, and one Africa, one, Af one Africa, make sure you have $50 bills or $100 bills for one Africa. That's the best rate. $50 okay. bills, one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's always good to have extra money as well. Yeah, the best thing to do is bring as much as you think you're going to use, and then uh, if you need to uh, set some money up on Western Union or uh, MoneyGram or uh, just use a Visa card or MasterCard. You can also use those options. It's just all up to you. Just preparation details that we just sharing ahead of time so everyone can be organized with what they're looking to do. Okay. If you're using your bank debit card, for example, do you notify the bank to let them know that you're going out the country? Yes, absolutely. I uh, definitely want to do that. And um, if your card still get jammed, you'd have to just uh, use your uh, phone that you have and then just call... Um, just, you know, just call an 800 number in the back and then uh, just explain the situation that you're in Ghana and your card is still not working. Because there's a chance for that. You can put a travel alert on and that may still happen. So, but the ideal thing is to still do the travel alert and give as much details as possible. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gamani. You're welcome.
And a lot of times with your bank, your bank and credit union, you can check your travel alert, and you can set them up uh, on on a calendar to your bank or your credit union. They have that device. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so that's it, family. So those are all the details. So family, we have gone to the Ghana visa in full uh, details, the flight schedule, and our departure and uh, reminder um, tour preparation details. So um, that's all the details. So if you have any more questions or you want anything to talk about, you can send me an email or a text message, and I'll do my best to communicate. And uh, beyond that, um, we're let, we are ready to leave in the next uh, four months for our Ghana, November 16th, 2018. All right, so family, everyone, uh, good night. You take care, and um, 